Chris Cole and Edward, they're reading the news. The two Chicago losers who read their own reviews. None of it matters except to them. They're legends inside both of their heads. Why, good morning, Egbert. It's awfully bright out today, isn't it, Driscoll? Uh, come on, open up your gimp, open up. I got time to look at slut. What do you say we wife swap again? Uh, this won't take long, baby. Abra. Cadabra. No, that wasn't so hard, was it? That's what she said. You mean my mom? You're going nowhere fast. The acid kicked in when he entered the store. He hoped they had released Lethal Weapon 4. And Lethal Weapon 4 wouldn't come out for another decade. Cause you see, the year was 1989. Once 1999 rolls around, Driscoll will be dead. Now picture this scenario. It's Friday night and Willie Dix enters his first blockbuster strung out of his mind on some premium blow. He waltzes in shortly after our acid-dropping friend Gordon Newport makes an unwelcome appearance and begins crawling around in the children's section. Meanwhile, Willie's just trying to find a big budget movie to watch when he bonks one of his bitches with his boomerang-shaped boner. Cock is locked. But he didn't anticipate not having a valid credit or debit card to sign up for a new membership there is no movie called Condoms for Contracts. <laughs> hey, welcome to Don't touch me. Eh, hey, fucking weirdo. I gotta get out of here. Oh boy, I was asking for my number. Well, what's your oh, number? Have a nice day. <laughs> welcome to Blockbuster, dude. It's too bright in here. Look, I need some porno movies and I need them on the double. <laughs> oh, man, it's a good one. Uh, so do you need to sign up for a membership or... Hey, are you a virgin? No, honky! Ah, no, no, I mean a blockbuster virgin. A new customer! Yeah! Look, I get it, it's your first time. It is. How's everybody? Thanks. <laughs> That's right. Okay, just fill out this paperwork and we'll print out your membership card in the next 20 minutes. Alright. Welcome to yeah. Blockbuster. Bring a flashlight. Um, do you need help? Of course not. Well, you can let go of me, or there could be trouble. Is that Willie Dix? Yeah, oh, you're a junkie. Come on, stand up with me. We're gonna get you to a safe place. Uh, no safe house for me. Stay low. You just have to trust me on this one. Let go. You mean to say your mama really named you Gordon Newport? I mean, it's like saying if my mama named me Shanene O'Connor. So if I can't help you find a movie, then get the fuck out. Shanene, meet me at Lake Titicaca. You go first. I'm Bob Saget. It's Lethal Weapon 5. This will teach you how to survive, you know what I'm telling you? I'm strung out on passion. My mama told me, walk both ways before you look across the street. Let's find you a movie. Hands up, gringo. Get your hands off my fucking daughter. Uh, uh. Why you always gotta come protect me, Dad? Because of this dumbass honky. <laughs> Dad, we go through this shit every week. I work here so I can rent you a free movie. Whatever you say, Shanene O'Connor. I'm undercover as a crackhead again. Hell yeah. Aren't you glad your daddy's an undercover cop? I know he is. <laughs> All right, Dad, go away. <laughs> the movie's due back Monday. Wow, and when the crackhead ended up being an undercover cop, that was pretty impressive. And the fact that Gordon Newport knew who Willie Dix was leads us to believe that this is a reoccurring occurrence. And the black girl, Shanene, who's working a 3 to 12 job five days a week, is broken. So we're led to believe that her encounter with Gordon Newport wasn't her first, and maybe they're in love. Have you ever been in love, Egbert? Mm -hmm. I clapped this Vietnamese girl once in chess club when I was back in college. But is that really love? First of all, I don't believe this is a love story at all. And second of all, the whites were really called out. It's the first blockbuster black exploitation film ever created. Well, Driscoll, you're missing my point. Love is subjective, oh. man. You're missing the whole point of the movie, motherfucker. The blue lives matter. And also the black lives too. 
And the white lives are fettuccine that brings us all closer to God. Come on, man. For as imperfect as the harmony was, the harmony was really perfected in this movie. It was an authoritarian joust to, to, to interracial love. Yeah, you ever been with a black woman? When I close my eyes. Of course. You heard it here first, you know, Egbert is a racist, clearly. But me, Driscoll, no, that's my name, homie. Yo, I'm never a racist, I'll never be that, that type of guy, no, never. You dig? So anyway, I give this movie a uh, three out of uh, four stars, you know, it's, it's pretty good, you know. I, I learned something from it. I learned to return my movies on time. And I give it scouts honor as well, because I was a well-known weeblow back in my prime. And I wasn't racist. I fucked your mom, Driscoll. No, really, I fucked your mom. We're in love. Like, it's pretty serious. Is that why she stopped making me lunch? Dubs.